Hey everyone, it's Andrew from the Infrastructure Group here. Um, I wanted to give you a demo of the distributed tracing work I've been focusing on for the past couple of months. This is something I'm incredibly excited about because I think it's going to allow us much greater insight into what's happening in the GitLab application. This is useful when you're developing locally, but ultimately we'll also use it in production to improve the observability of GitLab.com and self-managed instances too. So, what is distributed tracing? Well, distributed tracing lets engineers understand the path requests take as they travel through a system. So as GitLab grows, the application becomes more complex and the cognitive overhead to understand the impact of our changes becomes greater. Having tools which help us understand this becomes ever more important. Distributed tracing is particularly useful in understanding and troubleshooting performance problems in a distributed system. So with distributed tracing, each incoming request is a trace. Each operation in that request is composed of spans. Spans can have child spans in a hierarchy. And each component in a distributed system passes the trace identifiers down to the next level and reports its spans to the distributed tracing service. The tracing service then collates the traces from the different services for further analysis. So the question I often get asked is, how is this different from profiling? Um, in reality, they're actually quite different. Generally, profiling has a high overhead, uh, requires shell access in production, and carries some risk. For these reasons, people tend to use profilers in production only when it's absolutely essential. Additionally, a profiler will give you information about a single process, not the entire distributed system. Distributed tracing, on the other hand, has a low overhead and doesn't require shell access, so the risk of running it in production is much lower. The output is at a much higher level, so it's easier to understand certain performance problems. And of course, a single trace will span multiple systems, giving you a comprehensive view of the performance of a request. Once tracing is enabled in production, any engineer will be able to easily access our tracing infrastructure, similarly to how you already have access to other observability tools, such as Kibana, Sentry, and Grafana. So what's the roadmap going forward? Well, as of today, you can start using distributed tracing while developing on GitLab with GDK. This is a minimum viable change, um, but even now, I'm sure you'll find it to be incredibly useful. In this first iteration, I've instrumented calls between Workhorse, Rails, Sidekick, and Giddily. In the next iteration, I'll be focusing on including more details, including SQL calls, caching, and template rendering. And after that, I plan to focus on just on delivering distributed tracing to production on GitLab.com. How do you use distributed tracing? Before we begin, you'll need to make sure that your GDK instance is up to date. These changes are very new, so you may also need to rebase your branch of master to get the changes. Setting up distributed tracing in GDK is very easy. There are two things you will need. Firstly, you will need to configure the application to use distributed tracing by setting the GitLab tracing environment variable. And secondly, you will need to run a distributed tracing service. We're using Jaeger as our distributed tracer, so you'll need to set the, the GitLab tracing environment variable accordingly. I'm not gonna go into the details of this configuration, but it's a bit like a connection string, and I'll include the string in the description of this video for you to use yourself. So let's go ahead and configure this environment variable and export it to our shell. And that is my GitLab tracing environment variable. Now, in another window, I'm going to start the Jaeger service. Jaeger uses Docker, so you'll need to be running that locally. I'm using Docker for Mac, and it works perfectly. Okay, uh, now we just need to start the GDK in the normal manner and use the application a little to generate some traces. So now that we've got some traces, let's take a look at them. So let's go to the Jaeger UI. Um, I'll include a link to this UI in the video description. The UI has got three main modes. It's got search, compare, and dependencies. For this demo, we're going to focus on search. So after a trace has been generated by the application, you need to find it, and that's the purpose of this UI. 
Along the left-hand side, you're presented with various criteria for limiting your search. The service pull-down lists all the instrumented services in a GitLab application and allows you to filter by traces that have passed through a particular service at least once. The operation pull-down allows you to search for a particular operation, such as a specific endpoint or a sidekick job. The tags dialog allows you to search for spans with a particular tag. This is very useful when searching for traces which contain errors, for example. Another field which I find useful is the min duration. This allows you to seek out poorly performing requests for further analysis. So, let's go ahead and find some traces. So each trace result includes the number of spans in that trace and the services it has passed through. Let's take a look at this first trace. So, as you can see, this trace tells me that this request made a lot of Gitly calls. Not only do we see a visualization of the calls over time, but we can expand individual spans to see further details. For example, we can see that the repository exists, it's called many times. Um, digging in, we can see what repositories it was called on. So here we can see that this is Twitter type ahead. And on this one, if we look in the tags, we can see it's that repository. Some spans also contain detailed logging information. For example, if I click on this span, I can see details of events that happened within the span, which could be useful for troubleshooting. One more thing I'd like to show is how a sidekick background job is linked to the original incoming request. So I'm going to go back to the UI and find a sidekick trace. So I'll select sidekick. So in this trace, you can see how an HTTP request kicked off a sidekick job, uh, which made several calls to Gitly. Note that if the request kicks off multiple jobs, they will all be presented in the UI. So that's about all I wanted to show you. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions at all. And thank you very much for your time.